Hello there, my name is Brandon and I make pictures out of tiny squares. And in this video, I'm going to be designing some spaceships, uh, sort of in an overhead perspective. I guess kind of like a shoot 'em up style. And honestly, I haven't really played too many shoot 'em up games, uh, but I felt like designing a few spaceships would be kind of a fun exercise. And I was thinking about trying out a new color palette and just sort of looking for something different like this, just for the purpose of trying that out. The palette that I'm using here is called Lost Century 24. I found it on low spec and it was made by the user Calm Radish. The colors are quite a bit more muted or desaturated than what I would typically make for myself. And that was sort of the point in selecting this, uh, just to kind of experiment with some colors that are outside of my normal tendencies. My idea here is to create three unique spaceship designs and to have each one pull its main color scheme from different parts of the palette. For the first ship here, I'm using this gradient to these purple-gray tones, which to me had this sort of nice metallic look, and it kind of inspired me just to start with a generic combat starfighter type of ship. The construction here was about laying down a basic silhouette first using the darkest color, and then building up detail by introducing sequentially lighter shades of the main gradient that I selected. I was generally considering that the brighter tones might indicate areas that are prominent or higher, whereas the darker areas would be relatively lower or kind of in shadow. On top of that, it was also about using the combination and contrast of all these tones together to indicate the various technical details and to draw attention to certain panels or edges with a highlight. For the sizing, this ship here is around 45 by 40 pixels, give or take, and the other two that I'm going to be making are around this size as well. Since this was the first one though, it kind of acted as a warm-up of sorts, I feel like my first instinct with a Starfighter design though is always something towards the idea of an X-Wing. Uh, it's just such an iconic design for me. And this one definitely carries some of that influence, uh, but it was fun to create anyway and definitely just got my head in the game to some degree. So to finish it up, I selected a few of the green tones just to use as a secondary color um, and created some jet trails and other sort of accent details throughout just to bring a bit more interest. Uh, I think now though, let's actually move along to the other designs and then we'll bring them all together at the end. For the second ship, I'm attempting something with more of an evil alien kind of vibe to it. I started by taking the silhouette from the first ship and then just kind of changing the overall flow by having the wing shape angle off in a different direction. I was thinking about a way to bring a more ornate look to the wings this time and tried to go for a look that was sort of inspired by origami and paper airplanes, sort of this folded look that I built out of triangles within the silhouette. For the color scheme, I chose a gradient of the green hues for the main color, and then eventually I bring in some reds as an accent color, as well as some more of that purple gray, uh, which I found just sort of worked universally for like that metallic detail, right? One of the ways I tried to bring out more dimension or texture in the body of the ship uh, was just breaking it up with that dark tone into sort of these panels, and then applying a highlight edge along the top of each panel. And then towards the bottom, you have kind of that purpley gray mechanical texture there too. Now this one actually ended up being my favorite of the set. Uh, I feel like it kind of looks like a dragon in a way, and that's sort of a neat imagery to play with for a ship design. For the third and final ship design, my plan was just to mix it up yet again and create something that's an asymmetrical design this time, as opposed to how symmetrical the first two ships were. And I also wanted to do something that was more rounded or bulbous rather than angular, just to explore kind of different shape language. I decided to use the set of red tones for this one, uh, which are another nice gradient within this palette. Uh, the whole thing has this great rusty look, and I especially love the way that the gradient steps all the way towards this bright orange highlight. Uh, that one's just a really nice color. For the ship design, I was kind of in this mindset of like 1950s sci-fi ray gun aesthetic. Although, I guess kind of unintentionally as well, it also has elements of the cloud car from Empire Strikes Back. Um, and even a little bit of the Planet Express building from Futurama in there. Uh, perhaps it was just the color I chose that sort of had that influence on me. And finally, I'm finishing this whole thing by doing a graphic layout that sort of includes some basic ship stats and these title cards, just so I can give them all names and logos. I started with my favorite ship, the Dragon, and I scribbled in this lettering by hand, obviously. Um, imagine if I just left it like this. Uh, but by getting those basic letters down, it just gives something to work with. And then I continue refining the line work by making the curves a little more smooth, uh, making the line work thicker or thinner in certain spots, and adding little curls and embellishments to find something that just gives it a nice custom feel. For 
For my Star Wars-y inspired fighter ship, I created some block lettering using rectangles that were five by 13 pixels, and then erased from those blocks to find each letter. I called this one the Star Cutter because for a basic ship like this, that just sort of sounds appropriate and generically sci-fi. For the 1950 sort of ship, I wanted the lettering to have a clean and simple quality. Uh, something that would fit right in among, you know, a plain family-friendly aesthetic of like the Jetsons and Wonder Bread, if that makes sense. Um, I called it the Jupiter because the design and color reminds me of that planet. And the letters here are about 6 pixels wide by 9 pixels tall. And up to 16 pixels for the taller letters. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at them all together. Um, so, just to name them after the palette, here are the Lost Century spaceships. Alright, so you can see I've added a slight bouncy hover to them, um, just so they're doing something here. Eventually I think I'd like to sit down and work out some animations for these, uh, but for now it was just a nice piece of practice and a lot of fun trying out this palette. So once again this was the Lost Century 24 palette, and I've left a link in the description if you're interested in trying it as well. Uh, so I hope you have fun with that, and thank you for watching, and take care and keep it square.